A fisherman and his wife once lived in perfect squalor in a hovel beside the sea. One dreary winter morning, the fisherman set out in his boat and cast his nets, as he did every morning. But on this particular morning, instead of pulling in only seaweed, no, on this morning, he netted himself a groundhog. Oh, fisherman, said the groundhog, do not harm me, for as you can see, I am an enchanted groundhog. Release me and... I will impart to you the secrets of material success and wealth, for I can see by the rags you wear that you are a man of but paltry substance. <laughs> cool, said the fisherman. He untangled the groundhog from the net and threw her back into the waves where she treaded water, got her equilibrium back, and then the fisherman leaned over the edge of his boat and he says, So, impart. I'll tell you right off, you know, we don't want a whole lot, the wife and me. No, nah, um, we just, a little cottage, a patch of vegetables, some chickens and goats, uh, a low-mileage minivan, and, and enough of a stock portfolio to give us a modest but steady income. You know, no, nothing fancy, nothing grandiose. Right, said the groundhog. Well, that shouldn't be any problem at all. Okay. You live on the beachfront property. That's as good as sitting on a gold mine. So here's what you do. Pick up the trash, slap a coat or two of paint on the hovel, and list it with the local Remax office. And may I suggest that you mend your nets? They're full of holes. Whoa, said the fisherman. That's not the way this story goes. I've heard the story. No, no, no. In the real story, the fisherman gets everything he asks for. Free, gratis. Uh, none of this maintenance and, and litter control, fall to all. I mean, this is a fairy tale, is it not? We're dealing with magic, right? Well, yes. Yes, we are, said the groundhog. But you've got to realize, you didn't pull up the flounder of the soft touch. It's his day off today. Oh, count your blessings. <laughs> I mean, you could have netted the Little Mermaid. Oh, my heavens, you would be saddled with an emotional black hole for the rest of your life. You could have pulled up Davy Jones or Leviathan. I mean, that is always fatal. No, you, instead, you got me, the groundhog of common sense. Whoop-de-doo, said the fisherman. You mean... For all that I'm showing you mercy and compassion, all I'm going to get as a reward is more hard work? <laughs> what kind of fairy tale is this anyway? I mean, where's the magic? The magic? The magic, said the groundhog. What? You don't find yourself the least bit amazed to be talking to a groundhog? Look, buddy, I worked my tail off mastering the intricacies of human speech. And if that isn't enough, I, a groundhog, fur, four legs, no gills, and living in the ocean? You want dazzle, go see a Spielberg movie. You, you ungrateful Philistine, have seen more magic in the last five minutes than most people see in their lifetime. Where's the magic? It's under your nose, you bimbo. She flicked the stub of her tail and swam off to her burrow beneath the waves. The fisherman rode home, where he found his wife standing over a meager fire, stirring a thin gruel for their supper. Nothing again today, huh? She said by way of greeting. Nah, said the fisherman. Fishing's lousy. She served up the gruel in two chipped bowls. They sat down to the table, and before they ate, they held hands and looked at each other across the table and said, Life stinks. Now the groundhog of common sense swam home to her burrow beneath the waves where her friend, the flounder of the soft touch, had dinner waiting for her. The flounder greeted her with, Did your fairy tale end any better than mine did? Nah, said the groundhog. You know, it gets harder and harder to amaze them. They still ended up right back at square one. In my story, though, it was his fault, not hers. The two ate in companionable silence for a while, and then the flounder said, Oh, by the way, I'll be late getting home tomorrow. My agent called. I got the M.C. Escher calendar spot. Super, said the groundhog. 
I'll probably be in bed asleep by the time you get home. I have to get up early the next day for my annual Punxsutawney gig. Break a leg, said the flounder. Back at you, said the groundhog. They toasted each other with what was left of their iced tea. Then they polished off a lemon tart and toddled off to bed.